Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, this here is the first documentation video of the uh, build of the new 3D printer. Um, so far I haven't done a lot. I've worked on some of the pieces, I've made some design, design decisions. It's not that much yet. I did decide on a name. Um, it will be called Robin again because each and every one of my printers is called Robin. And uh, this one will be called the Big Bad Robin. So far, I've made some decisions about the material. Uh, I will be using item 40 millimeter all around. I will be using steel joining parts for the uh, 90 degrees bends. I will be using standard NEMA 17 stepper motors and where possible I will use ready-built parts uh, like sliders or simple bearings. I'm trying to keep the parts count of the DIY parts like the holders for the uh, timing belt um, as low as possible on this printer. So basically this here is a uh, go out and buy the parts and then put it together printer. Um, a problem for the recreation is going to be the uh, acrylic parts. I've made a lot of them. Um, since I have the laser cutter I, I can now make parts very easily and at a pretty good quality um, as long as I don't overdo it like uh, like here. Um, this was actually a pretty decent part but um, it's acrylic so it's hard it's it can take a lot of load uh, but it's also very brittle so it's very easy to break these apart um, which is, I think, a good thing. So if anybody was to really knock this printer over, it would break the acrylic before it would bend any of the metal parts. Because I can remake them, that's a good thing. I also decided um, on some of the, some of the uh, extra parts that I was going to go with uh, new holders for the timing belt. Uh, this is a new system. I hadn't used that one before. It actually works by, by clipping the belt. Uh, it looks it looks kind of weirdish if you look at it, but it's very simple. The belt slides into a small rail in here. It is held at the bottom, and uh, once it's in here, um, you actually have the belt go all the way around, and then you have one cable tie just tightening it all together and uh, that will form a, uh, a fit between this part, this part and two parts of the belt so they can't slip. I think that is going to work really well. In fact it's working really well down here. I've made some tests with this and, and tension is great, movement is great. Um, as you can already see I went for a uh, off-center stepper arrangement and the belt is being moved over the bearings um, on the on the slider. Uh, this is also working very well. I've invested more time into the um, X and Z axis assembly but I didn't get really far yet because uh, these parts require more work and uh, they will require some review and redoing. I think I think this is a good part. I think I can use this. Um, but for example this here is the, uh, the screw that is supposed to hold the, um, the elevator um, on the threaded rod and I think that might just be a little too small. I might go for an M5 screw. Also, right now at the start, I'm using very cheap screws um, that are not steel. And of course, I'm going to change that when I'm done. 
but for a start this is this is where I want to go um, it's gonna be really big it's gonna be 350 millimeters in, in the y direction about 380 millimeters in the x direction and I hope that I could get it up to 40 millimeters build height uh, while still having a uh, pretty powerful um, extruder well here's hoping apart from that um, everything basically uh, comes from a uh, from a shop that is specialized on making um, big shelf systems for for companies or where, where they store their stuff and I had a very a very lengthy and a very good conversation with somebody from that company and he basically explained to me um, how to build a very simple but very sturdy frame that would hold quite a lot of weight and that would take care of a lot of vibration along the way and um, thinking about it I, I really like the idea uh, to use the the knowledge that we have from these people and not reinvent the wheel every time we we go around so I think this is going to work out well yeah that's it for part one I hope I can get a few more design decisions uh, out of the way for example what type of controller I'm going to use um, if I'm going to use a controller that's going to require end switches because I haven't decided on uh, locations for end switches yet um, but the new Trinamic uh, driver chips um, they have current detection and they can do uh, homing without even one end switch on the system uh, although I do think that I will still have one for the z-axis those are some of the things that that are going through my mind right now and I haven't had a lot of time to ponder them yet but uh, with time I think this shall progress and uh, I hope that today I get enough time to work on the on the z-axis assembly so I can have a prototype z-axis crane with one slider for the z-axis and a second slider for the x-axis and maybe even get the, uh, the the belt assembly uh, into into working order because then we could start moving things and, and decisions would be made um, based on what we can see moving with the with the assembly itself. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and bye.